Mark chapter 13, verse 28. Now it's slowly to be read. We've been talking about the tribulation, the great tribulation, the book of Acts, and no church. Again, I think I said yesterday or the day before, do not, do not put Christian in this. Being the tribulation period, which we saw last night, the the great tribulation, the three and a half last year, there's no Christian. And I see this stuff on the internet. What, what do the Christians do in the tribulation? How does a Christian get saved in the tribulation? If you got saved during the tribulation, which the deal is, is at the end of the tribulation, you're no Christian. The moment of the rapture, that's it. Those are the Christians. And the time of, of tribulation, great tribulation, is dealing with the nation of Israel, Jacob's trouble. The millennium deals with the King of Kings, the Lord Jesus Christ, over God's people, Israel. Selected members of Christians who earned the right for an inheritance. Not all Christians are going to get that inheritance. In the millennium, you got the church, rapture, tribulation, great tribulation, second coming, second advent, either or, you know how you want to put it. You got the millennium, heavens, earth, pass away. You got the great white throne judgment. Then you got new Jerusalem, new heavens, and new earth. Don't mess up that order. Don't say Christians are going to go through the tribulation. Now, learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branches is yet tender, and put it forth her leaf. Okay. So now, look at Matthew 21. Matthew 21, 19. When he saw a fig tree in the way, he came and found it. And finding no thereon nothing, found nothing thereon but leaves only. He said, let no fruit grow on the henceforth forever. Presently the fig tree withered away. That's the type of Israel. It's showy, but it's no fruit. Throughout Matthew and the Gospel, you think, you know, you should wherefore by their fruit you should know them. One of the very first Bible verses I learned. And then you can apply that to a Christian, but the Jewish, they're the vineyard, they're the fig tree. They produce sour grapes. Not good grades. We talked about that over and over. So we come to the Mark 13. We pay attention. We pay attention. Learn a parable. Okay, a parable is a representation of a story. Of a fig tree. So it's not real. And if you're looking at a time of Israel, look at Israel. When the branch is yet tender. Okay, well, what do you get from that? You don't know? Who were the ones that went into the promised land? The young and tender Jews. Anyone 40 and over died in the wilderness. Who is the Jews that we're going to come and get through Jesus Christ at the moment, at the second advent? The young Jews. The young Jews. The tender Jews. And put it forth her leaves. She's showy. You know that summer is near. 
Now, don't go and say, oh, the other the second advent is in the summer. No, that's not what he's saying. You miss the content. You're trying to date something that you have no idea. And we read that, you know, even the Son of Man representing Jesus and the Jehovah Witnesses will see God doing something Jesus don't. In the flesh, Jesus as God has limitations. Now, can I get a little worldly with you, just so you would understand? At no time did Jesus say, with his hand, I said, well, let there be a Big Mac. No. He bowed his head and said, Father, take this, this few little loaves of bread and few little fishes and bless it in your name, hand it out. And they didn't get food delivered. They didn't go to a buffet. And there were nights that Jesus went in the mountain and he, and he would pray, he would be fasting. He's God. He's also human. You can't kill God. You can kill Jesus. And they did. I, I mean, you, know, who killed, you, know, you couldn't kill God. Correct. But you're able to kill Jesus. The man side of Jesus. The part you can't kill, the God side of Jesus. The man Jesus died on the cross. The God Jesus came out of that came out of that empty tomb. Holy Spirit inspired the writers in Acts to say the Jews, Pilate in them. Now I learned a parable, the story of a fig tree, Israel, when her branch is tender. Put it forth leaves, no fruit yet. You know that the summer is near. She's young. She's tender. She's great in age. She's going to bring forth her fruit in the millennium. And they're going to have children and children and children. But they're going to be wiped out by the Antichrist. So ye... In like manner, ye, in like manner, he's talking to Peter, James, and John, remember, and Andrew. Jewish men. Secretly. They question him secretly. Uh, Mark chapter 13, verse... Four, privately. He's not talking to the mass. He's not talking to the multitude. He's talking to Peter, James, and John, and Andrew. Jews. Peter will talk to the to the to the Israels saved. First Peter, second Peter. Andrew, Peter's brother. John, who will be the author of the Gospels, first, second, third, John. And the revelation of Jesus Christ. Who else is there? James. But the book of James is written by the brother of Jesus, the last. Really? Really? You say, well, Andrew didn't write a book. Yeah, but Andrew this time comes up. But throughout the gospel, of Peter, James, and John. Peter, James, and John. Peter, James, and John. Not Peter... James the less and John. Very I saying to you that this generation, I have no call for that generation, shall not pass away to all these things be done. Well, they passed away. But the Jews haven't. You realize there's only one class of people who's lived ever since their foundation and before their foundation. Before their foundation, there was the gr grandpa, there, there was the father of Abraham, the grandpa of Abraham, the great grandpa of, of Abraham, and on. And God called Abram and Sarah out. He says, I will bless you with a nation. Gave them a child that's completely miraculous. A woman who is beyond her time that the womb was dead, Isaac, 
Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Every Jew from there. L listen, there are people that call themselves Christians. They're no Christians. There are people today, especially the black people, oh, you know, we're Jews, we're Brit British Israelitism, we're, you know. <laughs> now, if you're not of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you're not a Jew. You are a fool, but not a Jew. But all these things shall be done is definitely prophecy. Heaven and earth shall pass away. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye bye, Mother Earth. Tree huggers. It's going away. Everything in the heavens, everything on the earth, your International Space Station. I don't think anything's on the moon. I don't believe that you did it. Uh, your Hubble spacecraft, uh, your things that they're on Mars or on the backstage of, of a Hollywood film somewhere. Your trees, your gold, your cars, your houses, your employment, your yachts, everything. Peter says to the fervent heat. Going to melt away. Going to burn away. <laughs> but my word shall not pass away. You will have a Bible in glory. And I would believe it would be the root. I am assured of it. It will be the root of the Antioch Bible, where they were first called Christian. Syria. Let's go back from King James Bible, the Geneva Bible, and go all the way back. It won't be the Alexandrian cult. It won't be the modern ver version. No, those, those are Satan. God has a Bible and Satan has a ton of them. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Plain and simple. All your, all your books all your great books, how to fix a car, how to how to do surgery on a man, how to build skyscrapers, all your law books. You ever see a lawyer's office? You ever been one? I mean, he's got all four walls of. I asked one once. I said, can, I says, "Can I just ask you a question?" He goes, "What's that?" He's always going to ask some questions about why we're there. I said, do you, had you have to read all these books? He says, no. He said, what we do is when we have to refer to a case, we are, we go, he says, it's like an encyclopedia. He says, some of them we had to read and know. All of those are going away. All your children books. You don't like a book because it's filthy? That's okay, it's going to go away. All your classical books. All your movies. Your Christian movies. Your filthy movies. All your bars. Your alcohol. You want to hug a tree? You'll be gone. Your pollution will be gone. Capitol Hill will be gone. Buckingham Palace will be gone. Jews and Christians and those heathen that have been right with God will not be gone with the word of God. What of the that day that day first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day Sixth day, Sabbath day, never Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Sunday. That's a Pope calendar. The hour knoweth no man. So you get people come up, they date it. There have been plenty of people dating the rapture. 
We have no idea when the rapture is going to happen. We have no idea exactly when the tribulation begins after we go. The Bible says that the dead in Christ shall rise first. We don't know what the time period between the dead and the alive go. We may have to sit around for an hour. Can you imagine God gives us a period of time. We miss the, you know, you think you missed the rapture. You're saved because the graves open up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Somebody like me be out there telling people, you be panicking. Then we go up. You know, I gave you five minutes to get on the phone and call somebody. Tell them about me before I came. I don't know. I don't know, but. No of no man. No. He <laughs> knows no. Imagine Peter, James, and John, and Angela, what about the angels? No. Not the angels. That was, that was brought forth by the men. No, there's no man. No, not the angels. Which are in heaven. No angel. Knows when the second advent is going to happen. So when we get to heaven by the blood of Jesus Christ, don't stop and say, hey, when, when's the second advent? No, no, no. Well, the seven years of the tribulation. Didn't we read, except the Lord sh shortened the time? The very elect, everybody would have been gone. You did read that, right? I know everybody's got their nice little charts and stuff like that, and they don't know nothing. You see, you go by the Pope time and calendar. God don't. Angels are richer in heaven. That's kind of funny because there are angels running around on the earth. Wicked ones. Neither the sun. Look at that. Capital S O N. But the Father. And again, I already said the Jehovah Witnesses run to, oh, see, Jesus is not God. Yes, he is. But Jesus in the flesh is limited. Say, how? I don't know. Take heed, I mean, take ye heed, watch, and pray. You know what the church is told to do until the rapture? Go forth in all the world and preach the gospel. You know what the Jews are told coming to the end, to the tribulation period, and the second coming of Jesus Christ? You know what they're told? Be very careful. Watch. You better be praying. Take heed for what? And watch for what? The Antichrist is after you. Pray you get help. For you know not when the time is. So you're living by Bewareness and prayer. For the Son of Man, Jesus, is a man taking a far journey who left his house. Jesus has gone off to heaven. He's left his house. He's not in that temple no more. Now, I know we've taken the seven churches of Revelation and we put it to the seven periods of the church age. You can also take those seven periods and put it to, and I know some people are going to scream in, huh? You can put that to the tribulation period too. And the fact is, the Laodicean church period for us is Jesus Christ is standing outside the door knocking. Anybody want to come and feast and sup with them? He will come in. 
That same invitation goes for the Jews in the millennium. You better pray because God's going to put that manna out there for them again. But when they get the manna this time, the devil's going to chase them. No one chased chased them in the in the wilderness. Now listen, you got to bring Exodus in the wilderness all into play with Daniel and, and the, the and the prophets and the gospels and the book of Revelation. You better be careful when you go out there to get your food. You better take heed. You better watch. You better pray because that Antichrist may catch some of you getting your food. You see how 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 it's so close that Psalm says that. Um, let me see if I can find it here for you. There's a place in Psalms that says from the from the dragon from busting his head from him he's gonna feed, and I don't have that verse. From the Antichrist, God is going to use to feed his people. Now, that's not that's not how I look up. I'll show you something. You think it's just Look at this. Wait a minute. Okay. Look at Psalm seventy-eight twenty-five. Man did eat angels' food. That's the manna in the wilderness. So they ate angels' food. In the tribulation period, they'll eat the devil food. I'm trying to find this version. What? That's the Antichrist. But there's a particular place he said he's going to bust his head and from that will be food and I won't be able to find it. Next time. I just remember it now. It's in there. Look for it, people. So, the Son of Man is taking a far journey. He's going to, he's going to heaven before the Father's throne. Right hand side, he's left the temple. You can't say church because he wasn't in your church to begin with. And as people, you know, we built this church and Jesus is here. You know, where two or three are gathered together, two or three bricks, two or three nails, two or three boards. Two or three pews, or two or three saved souls. We've had church services in a gazebo in the park. And we've had some great air conditioning. And it was so great we had to put things in our Bibles where the pages didn't blow. And we had great when it rained, we didn't get wet. I've had some great meetings on the street preaching. I 
that we we've done something in the family over and over. Many churches dis disproved. We've had home churches. It didn't work out, but we had home churches. We preach in the streets. I had a jail ministry. Try that one. And it wasn't even in the chapel. It was the cafeteria. And gave authority to his servants. Psalm 74, 14. Alright, it says, So thou, Psalm 74 14, thou breakest the heads, plural. Daniel says there are heads, Revelation said there are heads and crowns of Leviathan. That's not a crocodile, that's not an elephant, that's not a hippopotamus, that's Satan in pieces. Satan is going to get a deadly head wound and give it him, Leviathan, to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. The wilderness people in Exodus, the Old Testament numbers, got angel food. We read that. In the tribulation period, when the Holy Spirit is gone, Jesus is gone. The Christians are gone. The saints are gone. You get devil's food cake. You ever wonder where they got the angel's food cake? And then they got the devil's food cake? And you can look up all the thing about devil's food cake. Now, it comes out of the King James 1611 Bible. Now, the clave of fountain and the flood... Thou dries up mighty rivers. There, there, there's waters being dried up in the tribulation. There's blood like Exodus. They found in Celepicia, there's a lot of cisterns there to collect all the rainwater. So back to Mark. See, when you got a daughter, your child, that can handle the word of God too, I don't care your child knows all the Disney characters and knows all the football players and, and you know, all the stats. And, and they don't know. Listen, if a father teaches his son, keep your eye on the ball, but not on Jesus, that father failed. And I see plenty of Christian fathers do that. I know some Christian fathers that read Harry Potter magic books to their children. Probably go in the movie with him. So, in the wrong spot. Um, I take heed for it. So, give authority to his servants. That would probably be the 144,000. To every man his work. That would be every Jew. There will be people in charge of the scriptures. When they run. And command the porter to what? You're going to have somebody in there. Wherever they go. Wherever they go. you got somebody watching at the gates. or the, Whatever. They didn't have a porter. In the wilderness. They had the fire. And they had the cloud. Watch! Boy, that's a key word tonight. Watch! Ye therefore, who's the ye? It ain't Christians. Not America. For ye know not when the master, you know they kept calling him master? That's God. Who's coming at the second advent? Jesus. He said, Master. 
So what do you got? You got masters of the universe. You got Jedi masters. The master of the house. There's that temple. Jesus is going to build a temple. In Ezekiel. I believe the Antichrist, I believe it says that he's going to destroy it. He coming at even. That would be 6 p.m. to 9 a.m. Amen. 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Midnight, that would be 9 p.m. to midnight. Cock crowing, that would be midnight to 3 a.m. Or the morning, 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. There are four watches at the night. Which one? He said it could be any one. Man says the midnight hour. No. Oh, well, you know, the, the virgins are king and at midnight to call okay. That's not you, Christian. That's not you. Because you take that parable of the of the virgins, which is Israel. Because the bride's never called a virgin. If you take that with Israel, you got Israelites who are not going to have any oil and they're going to displease Jesus. And you got you got I won't see I was gonna say you got Jewish people with just enough oil left to get in. That oil is olive oil. Fruit. Wherefore by their fruit ye should know them. If they don't have no oil, they're the fig tree that has no fruit. Personal. Watch, therefore you know not when the master of the house cometh at even or at midnight, cock crowing, or in the morning. Least coming, second advent, suddenly, <laughs> it's like a suddenly, how many years has been, but he's, come, he's, he's coming for the rapture, he's coming for the second advent. It will be sudden. You know, you know, you know what that word does if you've been in the great tribulation? <laughs> Sudden is not quick enough. When you got these beasts and they're stabbing you with, with their tails and you get this pain, I forget, you, 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 you suffer for three months, I think it is, or six. And there's no remedy. And I say you go running all the way up the top of the Empire State Building and you do a swan dive on, on the road before you get hit over by all the yellow calves and all the electric cars and all the electric buses and they they blow up and burn up inside you. You're flat and twisted, burnt up, and then you you get up and you're even worse. And once comes along, they look at you, they look at your right hand, they look at your forehead, you ain't got no mark and they run you over. And behind them is the cops that take you in custody. And if you had the mark, they take you to the hospital. There's nothing you can do. The hospital's full. Because everybody's getting stoned. And not many workers, because some people won't take the mark. Christians went out in the rapture. You'll find out who really wants to do what they want to do for money or because they love to do it. Watch, therefore you know not when the master of the house cometh at even, midnight, cock crowing, 
or in the morning. So when Peter denies the Lord the third time, it is anywhere between 3 and 6 a.m. Lee's coming suddenly and find you sleeping. That's not dead. That's not literal sleeping. That's, you know what, you just go with the flow. And I don't know how you go with the flow in the tribulation period, but you're not doing what Jesus wants you to do. You're not doing what the Bible says. You've relaxed the law which will be in place. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, all. Okay, now all. Watch. Because they'll be separated. The Jews that done good will go with Jesus. The Jews that didn't do good will go into hell. They'll be separated from sheep nations. Nations that helped the Jews. They had no idea they helped the Jews. They just did it kindness, I would assume. And they get rewarded the millennium. And then one nations that did not help the Jew, they go off into hell. Not knowing what they were supposed to do. How's that for a term of salvation? How's that? The age of the unknown salvation. And what's the salvation? Works. Helping the Jews. What's the salvation for the Jews? Well, they had temple there for a while. And then they're going to go through the ministry like Babylon. The temple is going to be destroyed. And they'll be back in the synagogue. Synagogue come from Babylon. And so Peter, supposedly, somebody went over there and hid a whole bunch of Bibles. That would be quite interesting. They're still there. Wouldn't those Jews be pleased at that man or those people that did what they did? Because without the Bible, you ain't got a road map of the tribulation. The Jewish scroll stops at Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles is their last book in their order. They still got all the way to Malachi. But Second Chronicles is the last book of the Jewish uh, canon. Their Bible's last page. Look at Second Chronicles. Turn to my Bible. Oh, geez, look here. Second Chronicles. This is quite interesting. This is Second Chronicles 36. This is the last reading of their Bible, and they read backwards. The very last thing, which would be the very first thing. They lead right, right to left. So our very last thing, but their fir very first thing is, let him go up by the Lord God, Jehovah. Jehovah has told you, go up, build him the house of Jerusalem. It's all through there. You can't just say the new the Old Testament is dead and no. The New Testament is alive. You're dead. 